Hello and welcome back to Onderheim Zoo. So, as you can hopefully see here, I have finally finished our map. Um, immediately, people are all over it, <laughs> but it's all good. Um, yeah, we finally have a map of Onderheim Zoo. Obviously, the lower area there that we've not built yet, not quite completed, but it should be pretty easy to um, complete that area there now that we kind of have this structure going on and let me know what you think. I think it's kind of cool. I, I think this is gonna add, I don't know, I just like it. It took quite a bit of time, but it was fun to make and um, I think it just adds quite a bit to it. It's neat to see um, what this would look like as a zoo map. So there is something over here though that is probably looking a little bit new because I did do something off camera and that was this here track ride. <laughs> so I kept noticing that really nobody was coming to our Egypt section, our new Egypt section over here. So I thought, you know what, we're going to need something anyway. Like the zoo is getting to be too big, like too massive. I don't know. I don't know how people do really big zoos because everybody in this zoo just gets upset that they haven't been able to go to all the animals and like leaves. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think the guests are only here for a certain amount of time and they don't have enough time to see all of the animals in our zoo, even though this one is quite small. So I think having a transport ride is just going to help that out so much. Um, so essentially what the idea is, um, is people will come this way from the entrance instead of coming this way. Uh, they can take the transport ride and it stops off at all of our main areas over here. So we have um, a stop in this little town here if they want to go over to the, um, you know, the safari or something like that from there. Um, they can also stop off in Tatooine here <laughs> and uh, see everything that's going on there. Or they can stop off in the Egypt area um, right over here. And yeah, just kind of an added little way for guests to get around. Um, this area here is going to still be um, buildings. Like, this is still going to get built up. Um, I'm thinking it... I know I've been talking about doing another, like old town sort of section over here. Um, it might be that. It also might be like, I might go into more ancient Egypt over here and maybe even make them more like ruins. And then over here, expand out this um, Moroccan plaza area uh, just to cover like a little bit more area this way. And in the center here would just be like maybe some sand dunes, um, you know, vegetation, that sort of thing. Um, I'll have to add a little bit more around just to make sure that the guests are entertained on their drive. <laughs> but I did put this at max speed, so it's a pretty quick ride uh, for them as well. But they are already complaining that the uh, scenery isn't very good, so <laughs> we will definitely make that um, a little bit nicer eventually. But uh, also the pathway too. So essentially we will still have a pathway. This one's going to go continue all the way through to here as well, so you can walk through. Um, and like walk through the buildings and habitats and stuff that we are going to have here. But yeah, just for now, we'll have the track ride and then eventually people will also have the option to walk and I think that's going to help um, just overall get our guests around the zoo. <laughs> They're still not super happy yet, but it has already helped fill out uh, this area a little bit. We've got a few people who are coming to the talks um, and yeah, it's definitely a lot more crowded here than it was before. So yeah, I think that helps out quite a bit. So other than that, I also added in a couple of our new billboards. So here is our Meet the Camels uh, billboard with our camels featured there. And then over on this side, we have our Meet the Elephants billboard as well. There is actually one more um, billboard too, or two more billboards, I guess, um, over here. So similar to how we have the African Wild Dog, Hyena, and Dingo ones um, over that direction. We now have two here too, so if somebody's walking this way, they kind of get ad blasted for the for the elephant and the camel as they go, and maybe it'll encourage them to actually go all the way. Um, and the other thing that I did was temperature. So uh, let's just take a look at the temperature map here. I figured our zoo is making money, like I'm not too worried about losing money on facilities. So why isn't that one working? Oh, there's no power there. <laughs> of course not. Um, so essentially I put a bunch of coolers all over the guest pathways. So they're all set to like 25 degrees or something, not ridiculously cold. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping this will help our uh, guest happiness out a little bit just to, you know, keep them in a reasonable temperature most of the time. I might have to just fill in all these gaps. I don't know if they're still going to complain, um, you know, half the time because there's some gaps <laughs> here and there. So I might fix that. Uh, just to make sure that they are totally happy. But yeah, I think it's definitely worth it at this point to uh, make sure that those guests are very happy. 
But I think that's pretty much all of the updates that I have. It feels like I've done a lot because that map took ages and then the track ride took a little while and <laughs> and all of that. But um, we also I also will need to add stations to the track ride to uh, make them look a little bit nicer. I don't think they need to be like it is just a, a ride, like a, a driving thing. So I don't think they need to be anything too special. But um, I think I want to hide the track and, and all of that as well. But that will have to come at a later date. So let's get started on this temple. I am so excited to see how this turns out. Alrighty, so this one is another big time lapse today. <laughs> I keep saying this every single time, but this is, I think this is the biggest one yet. Um, but that's okay. I really love this temple and how it turns out and all of that. So right off the bat here, you're going to see me creating the outline in terrain. So this was an interesting decision. Um, I'm not going to say that it was the best decision that I've ever made. I don't know exactly how I feel about it. I mean, in some ways, I think it did save a lot of pieces. And I know like the piece count is starting to get quite ridiculous in this zoo. And I don't want my, you know, I don't want it to start slowing down on me or anything like that. So in that sense, I think it was maybe a good idea, but it has its pros and cons. I don't know. I think it works out in the end, but would I do it again? Uh, maybe not. Maybe I would just, you know, make this out of actual pieces next time. <laughs> just like, I don't know, the plaster pieces or something. That's the problem is there aren't a lot of like good textured free pieces that can, you can like rotate at any angle. So I don't know. Um, yeah, but anyway, <laughs> essentially what I did was I made the entire temple. You'll see I, I jumped because I didn't feel like that was worth showing. Um, but I made the entire temple structure in terrain. Um, so that's what that is. Uh, and then here I just, I'm creating kind of a cool angled entrance. I was still getting a lot of those disconnection errors for a while there, but I, I think it was my internet. Um, uh, my internet's been having some issues lately, but it's fine. It hasn't happened in a while. So <laughs> but when I was doing this part of the build, it was happening quite a bit, which is annoying. Um, but yeah, these are just the uh, kind of loose mud pieces, um, which I could have used to build the whole temple, but I didn't. <laughs> um, it's also like these ones don't flow very well together either. I'm glad I didn't use them for the whole temple because um, these ones have a very clear like outline around them. I don't love that. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this is kind of like an inset, um, I, I, like a backwards angled wall entrance, which I thought was kind of a neat idea. The ones that I was looking at were actually angled the opposite direction, but I didn't want to bring it out further than it already was. And I didn't want to re redo the walls. So I thought, eh, let's do it a little bit more unique and make it like inset, <laughs> inset angled instead. So yeah, essentially what I do with all of this is I just want to, you know, do some very typical what you would expect for um, temple decor, I suppose. So playing a lot around with these uh, South America pieces, because those are the temple pieces that we have, even though this is obviously not a South American temple. Same sort of idea. Um, obviously the script is a little bit different than you would probably see. Um, if you were actually doing, uh, you know, seeing something in Egypt, but, you know, for our, our intents and purposes for this game, I think it, it works out okay <laughs> in the end anyway. Um, and then, yeah, I wanted to play around a little bit too with some color as well. So bringing the color in from the village over. Um, so you'll probably see I go and like grab the colors again <laughs> from the village because Planet Disney does not remember all the colors that you use. Um, apparently I should just start like noting down on a notepad the color codes <laughs> for things that I want. But um, yeah, so I, I started off by playing around with these wooden pieces. These are the painted um, wooden beams, the Asia painted wooden beams, I think. I don't know why they're Asia beams, but I guess they came in, uh, came with the, like the Asia theme. But yeah, this is the same pattern that's on those roofs. And I just thought, you know, this would be a good way to emulate it quickly over uh, this little area here. And I don't think you can really tell that it's wood. It looks like, you know, tile or something, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I end up changing the color. I don't know when exactly um, it is, but I play around a bit with these tiles as well. I don't end up using these ones um, just because I think the patterns are too small for this like huge facade. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. So I changed the color um, of the actual walls. Um, I pick this new kind of light. It's a very light blue. It looks like kind of like a white, but it is a very light blue. And I think it contrasts really well with the orange sand. Um, so I like how, yeah, I really like how this looks. And I use this color kind of throughout the interior as well, you'll see. Um, but what I'm doing here is I thought, you know what? Those like patterns, they're too, like the color changes are too small. Like the pattern itself is too small for this wall. So I thought I would make uh, my own 
patterned tile, essentially. Um, I don't know. It was random. Like, I just, this is a totally random pattern. I don't even know. Did I get it from anywhere? No, not really. <laughs> um, you know, does it look really, does it look good? Probably not, really. But, um, you know, it worked for all, all our intents and purposes anyway <laughs> for this one. And I think it blends in perfectly fine um, where it ends up going. So just using, again, the same colors um, as before. And it kind of looks like... I don't know, it's sort of like that interior red and yellow is sort of like the tower that we have at the beginning and like in our logo <laughs> and stuff, right? Like maybe that sort of fits. I don't know, but it just goes up here anyway and I think it looks good up there, so <laughs> it works out. Um, sometimes inspiration comes from the most random places and sometimes it comes from nowhere at all and you're really just winging everything. So I wanted to put up on the side here a couple of platforms that we could do um, statues on. So. Obviously, um, there are no really large statues in this game. <laughs> I like, I kept thinking about it. I was like, even if it was like an animal, like it doesn't have to look anything like the um, Egyptian statues. Like it could just be a giant animal statue or something, but there's nothing big enough in this game to like fill up that space in any sort of meaningful way. Maybe if one day somehow magically we get scalable pieces, I don't, I don't imagine that happening. Um, but if it did, maybe then I could put in like a giant statue of a camel <laughs> or just giant, like make that meerkat statue significantly larger. Um, but for now I made these, um, people, <laughs> I don't know what they are. I don't like, I don't even want to like, I don't know. I think they're ugly enough that I probably shouldn't even claim that they're anything official, um, <laughs> or anything representative. I think they kind of work if you just sort of like walk past them and like see that they're there in the background of like the start of the temple when you're entering and don't really think too much about it I think it's fine um let me know if you think that they're a really bad eyesore I could get rid of them and just you know figure something else out <laughs> for the area but you'll have to see them when they're actually in the area themselves I mean the general shape is correct it's just it's hard to make stuff like this using um using shapes like this I don't know I just I don't maybe I'm not good at it um, it, this didn't take me that long to do, so it probably, if I had, like, actually put in a whole bunch of time and effort to do this, maybe it would have been better, but yeah, we just kind of, I just went for it. There he is, sitting man, <laughs> that's gonna guard our temple. Obviously, he's not gonna be bright blue. I changed the colors here and added some of those traditional stripes, um, on his hat there, but yeah, he's just sitting here. Give me two of them, one on either side. Uh, and of course we need to give him a chair as well. Um, there's a temporary elephant just sitting on the side over there. Um, because I thought about maybe using the elephant head somehow on these guys, but no, it's just, it's just not big enough. <laughs> it just really doesn't work out, so. Um, yeah, that is pretty much that. Besides that, oh, I did this little thing too. I mean, whatever, you don't really notice it to be honest. <laughs> So I put these like the animals here because I was like, oh, well, maybe it'll like look a little bit more intentional if we have all of the, um, you know, a bunch of our African animals just sort of as like silhouetted on on this guy here somehow. Uh, again, I don't know. You know, let me know what you think about him. <laughs> uh, but down below, it uh, makes a lot more sense. <laughs> we I put in the um, actually Egyptian styled um or North African styled uh, meerkats and fennec fox statues all around the base there. And I think they look really cute um, sitting there. So that worked out uh, a-okay. And then of course, just putting these guys on either side. So now we're entering into the interior of our temple. And this first area that we're gonna do here is a, um, this is sort of, um, I don't know exactly what like you would call it, but it is, it's meant to be sort of like a shrine, like a water shrine sort of thing. So there's like this little pool, um, because we don't have a ton of space, so the pool's fairly small, but like I think that that's okay. Um, and you know, we're gonna build up a whole thing all around this uh, little area. I was playing with lighting quite a bit in here because, you know, obviously we want it to end up quite lit up and I was trying to figure out how to get it lit up, but it works. In the end, I, I end up doing most of the lighting from underneath, um, underneath the ground, underneath you know, pillars and that sort of thing, but yeah, so I wanted to build, um, essentially these kind of, this kind of round, like circular pillar 
um, situation going around this pool just to kind of show that it's, you know, of significance. <laughs> um, they're not holding up anything other than the main roof. Um, so these pillars are going to go all the way up to the ceiling of uh, this temple. Um, and I repeat these pillars a couple other places as well later on. But I was mostly just playing around with the actual, um, you know, some of the columns, the mud columns, the um, North African pillars, kind of whatever um, round pieces <laughs> looked good and that I could recolor, essentially, is what I was using here. And I think these look cool in the end. I, I like it. Um, you know, just bringing that all the way up to the roof, of course, as I was saying, all the way up to the ceiling. Um, and then we're just going to repeat these, obviously, all the way around the pool. And you'll see some of them, like the ones in the back there. Um, it, there, it's meant to be covered by the the walls, right? Like it's meant to go all the way up to wherever it's supposed to go up to, <laughs> um, based on how high the ceiling is in that area. So at the bottom of each pillar here, I was trying to figure out a good way to integrate the water again. Um, so I thought these fountains worked really well. You can kind of tell that they're water, I think, um, but they're also, you know, fairly subtle and they don't take up too much space. So. Um, but they are just a nice little feature that goes all the way around there and of course um, adding some lights underneath them all. I added, I tried to make all the lights in this area um, on all the time so just in case like the light level somehow does get high enough in here during the day uh, that they would turn off on automatic mode, they're on all the time mode <laughs> uh, if that makes sense. But these ones, these um, African lamp posts, you can't change when they're on. And when they're off which i thought was really strange so um, i couldn't turn them to on all the time um or automatic or anything so i don't know if they're just automatically automatic or if they're actually on all the time i haven't really noticed yet <laughs> uh but yeah that's kind of i don't know that was a weird quirk that i found uh, while i was making this one but i wanted to hide the base of these just because i wanted it to look a little bit more cohesive with what was going on with the columns here but um yeah, that's kind of just to light this area up a little bit more. I like how I like the look of these ones, um, the fire that comes out of them. They're not super dark, um, but they're also not super bright either. And of course, what else would this temple or shrine be to in a zoo other than to the sacred scarab beetle? <laughs> so very common, I think, probably most people who have made um, a northern or like a Egypt style zoo have put the temple for the scarab um, but I thought it was just I think it's such a cool idea um, so that is where that is and I, I added the three paths to it uh, just in case it gets busy in here I don't know if it's going to <laughs> honestly but you know it just gives the guests a little bit more room anyway they can kind of take a look from any angle um, and then yeah so I I did this brickwork all the way around um, this pond and I don't show doing it all because it was very tedious <laughs> but you'll see a glimpse of how it looks at the end um, after this is all done there it is so I added in red I added in um, you know it kind of looks like a sunbeam sort of thing going on uh, back there I think it's kind of yeah I like how it turned out <laughs> and I wanted to kind of clean up the edges here a little bit just by um, essentially making these are gonna be planters so this is for a bunch of plants um, going in into the background here and just to kind of, you know, make it a little bit more even, I suppose, and <laughs> make it look like it's more centered because it's not perfectly centered. It was impossible to perfectly center it um, in this build, but I think this kind of makes it, it just rounds it a little bit more, um, I would say. I like how it, uh, how it turned out. And this part here is just obviously a little black back splash as well. We don't have it on the back wall because that back wall is, um, tilted it's um angled obviously so <laughs> that wall's just gonna stay plain but i don't think it sticks out too much uh just keeping it plain um i don't end up putting any plants back there anyway so i think it kind of works out but yeah basically just gonna fill up these planters at this point i play around a bunch with the vines um as well you'll see here um once it is done or once i get to that <laughs> uh point in here as well so yeah just kind of making it look a little bit more humid and green in here i guess i think all the colors that are in here go together really well so yeah the green with the red i think looks really good um and of course you know the orange and the orange walls and all of that is all pretty standard um pretty standard stuff so yeah just trying to get across that like humid 
hot environment in here um, where it's obviously like shaded. There's not, well, there isn't really any sunlight in here technically, but we could assume that like, you know, there's enough obviously to keep these plants alive when it comes through the doorway. <laughs> um, and we're in a desert, so they're mostly just enjoying the fact that it's probably a lot cooler in here because it is shaded <laughs> and therefore the tropical plants are happy <laughs> to be here. Um, so yeah, that is what that looks like. You'll get a better idea of what this um, all looks like in the actual zoo. When I, I, I do a little walkthrough at the end for it. Because <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard when I'm building because I have the light on, like the camera light on for building, obviously, um, to make it a little bit easier to see. Uh, but those, all those trees and like all those plants are actually quite, it's in the dark essentially all the time. Um, you can see them very, uh, very vaguely in the background and I think that that kind of mysteriousness makes them look a lot cooler um, but yeah struggling a bit with paths here of course who doesn't struggle with paths <laughs> um, it was really weird I had to like I had to put on the um, tunneling earlier to get these to tunnel down but yeah if you have issues with like train modification failing when you're trying to tunnel with your paths um, I would just play around a bit with like when you start to turn on tunneling um, like how much earlier in the actual um, process. Like I had to turn on tunneling a few squares back before we actually started digging down essentially for that to work, which seems strange, but you know, whatever. Um, it kind of worked out, but it looks really funny here now um, without the ground in, but this is all gonna be built. So all the terrain doesn't really matter uh, where the actual terrain is at this point because I'm putting in actual walls and floors <laughs> on this section. Um, and... Yeah, quite a bit of this one gets done off camera, but you'll see, so you might see that there's a few little details here and there left out. I do cover m m more of it afterwards, <laughs> um, but we'll be able to see that better when we actually, uh, next episode, when we go down into that, into those depths. I'll talk about that a bit um, after the time lapse as well, but I thought it would be a good idea to just kind of brick up these walls as well, just up to a little bit. Obviously, uh, I don't know, I mean... Yeah, it would be impossible to use these. I love these temple bricks, but it would be impossible to use them for the entire thing because we have the slanted walls, um, essentially. So, you know, I think, you know, the best in between, I use them as like the first four meters or whatever off the ground, just to kind of show, you know, a little bit of structure being held in there. Maybe it's like new, um, new structure so that they're trying to, you know, hold it, hold it up a little bit more or just, you know, refurbish it a little bit. Um, whatever that might be called, but <laughs> yeah, overall, I think uh, it kind of doesn't look too out of place, I don't think, especially from a guest perspective, because um, you have, oh, you can only see so high anyway from a guest perspective, so it works out, but here I'm just playing around with these um, pieces uh, for probably longer than I needed to <laughs> to make these walls, but I ended up making them and then I put them everywhere. Um, it just kind of as a curb and then the lighting, so we're going for very green themed lighting now um i kind of i brought this into more of the temple like, later on as well uh just to kind of like give it that eerie feeling but yeah i think i, I really like how it turned out <laughs> this very eerie green lighting um going into like the tomb area like the underground tomb exactly what you would expect i forgot to check if this game has any fog um props i don't know if it does or if it's only planet coaster that i think planet coaster had fog um but i'm not sure if there's actually like fog props here i should take a look because that would look really good if it was like foggy going down there but i have a feeling they might not i'll have to see um but yeah up here i just wanted to bring some more of the um foliage back essentially <laughs> do that kind of green area up here as well um give it a good little you know good little detailing <laughs> uh, a bunch of plants in the background here to uh you know it, again in the dark it actually you don't see the plants back here very clearly but you can kind of like you can tell that they're there because the um with the lighting it's i don't know i think it just gives such a cool effect so <laughs> yeah you'll see it in the um hopefully you'll see it clearer in the real time part but i think that is pretty much it so let's take a look All right, and here is our temple. So I'm gonna do nighttime first, just because I think the inside's gonna look so much cooler at night. And obviously we'll take a closer look at the outside in the daylight as well. So as we come up here, I finished the two obelisks um, off camera, just cause 
they were, I mean, pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but they're massive. I love it. Um, and yeah, the entry area here. Oh no, it's not nighttime anymore. Hang on. Okay, there we go. Now it will be night the whole time. <laughs> um, anyway, so here is the entrance walkway up to our giant statues and our, I put all of the, um, the flaming, like, torch lights, whatever these are called, <laughs> on the sides there because I thought the flames were kind of appropriate uh, for this theme. And, of course, as we come in, a bunch of our shops are closed because, I don't know, um, our vendors are busy doing other things, apparently. But, yeah, this is what it looks like, the shop area. So this one also was done off camera um, just because it was pretty straightforward, but that's what it looks like. It's not a glare off the camera, actually, out there. Those... Um, these lights are very bright. I might think about replacing them with these ones, but um, I don't know. You can let me know what you think about those guys. But yeah, you kind of walk in here and on the sides here are some, just a little bit of a water feature. Um, those are all lit up as well. And then as we come in this way, we have our scarab exhibit, of course. Um, so you can kind of walk right up to here and see them very clearly. Um, where are they? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're right there. They're tiny. Teeny tiny beetles, but yeah, that's them. Two little beetles there. Very nice. We'll need, um, they'll obviously have some more in their, in their enclosure once they, once we get some of the research done. But this is kind of a fun little, um, just a fun little lake situation here. Um, we've got some very bright colored water down there. <laughs> um, and yeah, just a nice little, like, temple sort of area, I suppose. Like a little ceremonial area, I would call it. And then as we go all the way through here, this side, which I think is super cool, um, this is our entry into the land of the darkness, <laughs> or the underground, I suppose. Um, so obviously this is not done, this just goes into darkness for now. But that's what we're going to be working on next episode, is what comes down there? Hmm, do you have any guesses? <laughs> Let me know if you have any guesses, but uh, this temple, I think, um, gives a good, like... Well, how would I say it? Um, it's a good, like, oh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Foreshadowing. <laughs> foreshadowing, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, it's a good, like, foreshadowing to what is actually going to be down in the underground area, um, which is, of course, where our name Anderheim Zoo came from. I kind of, like, made it up as a very, it's a very loose translation of underground secret. So we're going to figure out what the underground secret is pretty darn soon. And that is the way that we are going to get there. And putting it back to normal zoo hours. Uh, this is what the temple looks like from the outside. Um, it's obviously still morning, so it's not super bright out here yet, but you know, same kind of idea. Um, obviously the area around has not been finished up yet. <laughs> That'll have to happen as well. All of it here. I'm thinking I'll put a couple of like, maybe I'll put a building on this side to like mask those machines and we'll obviously have some of the town built out this way as well. The actual, um, like Egyptian sort of this theme of a town <laughs> or village or whatever it might be, uh, is going to expand out this way a little bit more as well. So I think that'll kind of, you know, cover a lot of a lot of the stuff there that we want to have covered. But yeah, a little closer look at the obelisks here. Um, these are just plaster uh, pieces made to look like a pyramid on the top and, you know, the big things on the bottom. They are a little bit massive, but also so is our temple <laughs> from the outside, really. Like, it's big, so I don't think it looks too out of place um, considering, like, you know, you have the two together, but it's kind of cool. I wonder how much you can actually see from down. Yeah, look, you can actually kind of see it like looming in the background there too um, when you're over in all these areas as well. So massive, massive um, temple, which is awesome. But yeah, that is pretty much it for today's episode. So I hope you enjoyed it. It was a big, it was a pretty ambitious build, I would say, for me, but I really like how it turned out. So let me know what you think as well. I think that interior is super cool. It's like, it's not the biggest thing, obviously, like, I don't know, I was kind of debating, I mean, it's, you know, a pretty large object in a zoo, but the interior is actually not that big, but I think it's big enough that we managed to get a lot of good detail in there, um, and, like, there's plenty of space for what's going on in there, but you can still have it very, like, detailed, and, um, yeah, I find spaces that are way too big, it ends up being quite hard to detail them properly, so <laughs> I'm really excited to see how this looks uh, with the city built. 
on top of it as well. But we're going to do that underground area first because I'm going to get rid of the ground for that <laughs> and then re-put the ground on afterwards because otherwise that's going to be way too difficult um, to do actually building underground. So we're not going to do that. But yeah, that's what you can look forward to next week. So as always, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of today's episode and I will talk to you in the next one.